Welcome back to another hour of the Colleen and Bradley show on My Talk 1071. I'm Colleen Lindstrom. That's Bradley Trainer. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you today? Wonderful. Thank you for asking. It's a beautiful day at the Minnesota State Fair. And um, uh, we feel inspired to try to lend our help to uh, a sinking ship. And that sinking ship is called The Talk. Am I right, Bradley? Yeah. So CBS is The Talk is experiencing some issues. And I just thought we could get the uh, programming department together. Is that us? Yep. Okay. Uh, Holly, Colleen, and myself. And I think we should workshop what the future of the talk should be. So for those of you who don't know, the news yesterday was that Elaine Welteroff, one of the hosts, co-hosts of the talk, is leaving after just one season, which I think leaves the panel now at three, one of which is a long time. Well, I think Cheryl is the longest, right? Right. I believe so. Anyway, regardless. Yeah. Amanda Klutz is fairly new, and then Jerry O'Connell is like brand, brand spanking. Uh, the shows, and this was also after we got the confirmation, after we already knew, but it was never confirmed that. Carrie Ananaba. Carrie Ananaba from Dance, formerly of Dancing with the Stars and much else, decided to leave for good as well. So. The producers of the show, Heather Gray and Kristen Matthews, so I guess we're speaking to these EPs yep. directly. They said, we wish Elaine all the best. We are grateful for her passion, enthusiasm, enthusiasm uh, and insight that she brought to the show daily. Her openness and meaningful conversations were attributes we admired and always appreciated. So she left on good terms, Yeah, is what we're saying. But clearly, and I don't know why she really decided to leave. I'm sure she'll say it if she hasn't already, what the th- what her reasons were. Right. And I'm sure they're legitimate and valuable reasons. I will remember the last time that Elaine Welteroth was in headlines, though. Well, was when it's... she entered the chat, which was uh, <laughs> the Sharon Osbourne uh, kerfuffle. Yeah, she got thrown under the bus by, I think, people connected to Sharon Osbourne yeah. and made to look mm, a little duplicitous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. based on some conversations that had been recorded and leaked yeah. about this drama surrounding Piers Sharon Osborne's racism, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, I don't think we need to go deep in the weeds of all of that and relitigate it, but what I will say is the fact that she's leaving after one season means she was like, I gotta get out of here. There is no future for me here. This is not a right. valuable use of my time and or efforts. And I would say... Based on the fact that all of these other people have made similar choices, with the exception of the three that remain, right? I don't know what's going to be left of the talk, and I'm not sure that it needs to exist in its current format. I don't disagree with that, but the first thing I will say is that it's not such a long walk to assume that there's a systemic, systemic, a culture problem at the talk that's sort of at the root of a lot of this these mass exoduses. Tell me more. I'm just saying that, like, whenever a, um, a large group of people drop like flies from an entity, it's yeah. not so. It's not such a far reach to think there's some culture issues there. Meaning, like, something's tense, something's not being resolved, <laughs> people aren't happy, it's pretty clear, right? The fact that people are recording each other and then dropping it to the media is an For indication example, that that's not maybe the most delightful workplace yeah, to be a part of. Yeah, trust is not at the fore. That's what I do. Like, I just, I want to know what's going on behind the scenes because I'm far more interested in the things we'll never know. Yeah, how like, the sausage I is know, made. Because, you know, everybody's got to put on their best, you know, put their best foot forward in right. terms of how they interact with the public and talk about stuff like this. Yeah. Because, let's be clear, if any of us were involved in this, like we're not going to be telling people no. exactly what's going on well, behind no, the scenes, it, or like what who's who really you should be wagging your finger at. Yeah, they're going to shine the turd because they're not. <laughs> they are though because they're not going to. They're not going to burn a bridge. Uh, that would not be in their best interest. So we'll we'll never hear the true story. Is my point. But but to your point, I just I feel like unless there's going to be an extreme culture shift at the talk, the talk is probably not long for this world. Now. The, the the thing that we've all been focused on is the fact that Jerry O'Connell finally has gotten what he wanted all along, 
Which is a what spot a, on a talk show. I mean, I feel bad, though, in the sense that, like, this, the show that's imploding, I don't want to oversell it, but the show that's imploding, you know, that's it's where the you best get you your could gig. do. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jerry. Jerry's but, just like, I'm fine. I love this. It's a great show. You guys want to do a show? Let's but, do a show. But the thing about Jerry O'Connell is Jerry O'Connell has energy for all, which it, I think, I don't know. To me, it seems like the smart thing to do would be to just give him his own franchise. Like, don't make it the talk anymore. Make it like... Well, yeah, except I think Cheryl Underwood Jerry. And, you know, the other host might have something to say about sure. it. Sure. And maybe there's something else for them to do, too. Or maybe there's a role that... I just feel like... Yeah, I, I feel like they need to have, like, a fire sale on the talk. So you think just get rid of it? Wipe the slate clean and start fresh. I, you know, I think it just depends on what the future of talk television is going to be. You know, having a panel like... The View, because that's really where the show right. has its origins. And the future of The View is very much in doubt at this point. Maybe not that it will exist as a show, but in terms of the next direction it'll take after right. the the departure of Meghan McCain. Mm -hmm. And The View, I think, has taken a very specific trail journey. They've gone on a, in a very specific direction that the talk doesn't go on. The talk seems to want to have a, like, let's all get along and let's all you know, have our own opinions, but we're right. not going to be shouting each other down sort of approach. Which is kind of old view, but not really. I mean, they always sort of short shouted each other down, but it's gotten worse. But, but I don't know if the world, like, I don't know. I just don't know if the world wants that kind of television anymore, which is why I'm having a hard time seeing what the future will look like. Holly, you know, as an executive, former executive producer on a television show, I'm not aware of. Um, what are your thoughts on the future of the talk? Mm, I think we're, we're probably going to have a season of the talk. They're going to see how it goes, and then they'll reconsider it at a later date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and when Let's they reconsider this. it, they're yeah. going to flush it. Well, you know, you guys are right where it's like, okay, so The View is entering its 25th season. Yeah. And the talk has been on for more than a decade. Is this a kind of television that people necessarily want? Yeah. Are we doing this anymore? Are we doing it? And yeah. It, those are good conversations to have. Are we yeah. doing it? And really, to be fair, there are so few personalities who can do that job that I don't know that there's enough room for two of those shows. I agree. I absolutely 1000% agree with you on that. Because people, everybody thinks that like they should be on The View. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, why not this person? So why easy. not that person? It's like, no. That is a very unique skill set because you have to be able to disagree and like the people you're disagreeing yeah. with and also not take any of it personally. Yeah, in 2022. And also or 2021. Do it in a professional way. 2020 and 2021 has proven that that is a rare skill. Yeah. When we return on the Colleen and Bradley show, we are going to agree on all things. Oh. Um, Yes, because that's what we do. But we also, when we do disagree, we like the people we disagree with. When we come back, though, we're going to talk about uh, this kerfuffle between Scott Disick, Courtney Kardashian, that guy uh, that she used to date and all that stuff. I need to get up to speed with it because I do not understand what's going on. Bradley's going to give us everything we need to know about that after this on My Talk 1071. Okay, so there's this like big drama going on with Scott Disick and Courtney Kardashian, etc., etc., etc. Bradley's going to get us all up to date on that on the Colleen and Bradley show, My Talk 1071, live from the Minnesota State Fair. It is parade time, in case you haven't heard. Um, Bradley, I almost lost it when you were doing a spot in the last segment because you had some bass. You know, I will say that um, one of the talents that I have honed ever since we started at the Minnesota State Fair is the ability to do, a, like, two things at once. Yeah. Or I should say to do something in the face of complete and utter distraction. Yeah which for me as a person is not always easy, but the fact that I can tune out a marching band yeah, that is literally and go deep in the shallow 20 of pop feet culture from you. Yeah. as it's like, I mean, I honestly feel like I could be a war correspondent. Wow. You know, I mean, I feel like it's not a long, okay, no, I'm clearly well, being is, facetious. There but. is a war brewing uh, between Scott Disick. I like what you did Thank there. you. And so we can correspond to that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I will say that this particular story is not one I'm typically here for. Yeah. And that is the story of Kourtney Kardashian, Scott Disick, Travis Barker, Jonas uh, Benjima or Bendima. I don't know how to say his last name. I apologize. Jonas. 
um, who she dated for like two years back in the day. Anyway, we talked about this. Holly, I think you had this in a dirt alert yesterday. Or like the dirt alert update. It was a very brief moment. Yeah, it was a dirt alert update. It was hard to uh, bring brevity to the story, so I'm glad you're expanding upon it. Today. Yeah, because it's like all these weird, twisted parts. But here's here's the truth. The truth is Scott Disick needs attention, mm-hmm. and so does Kourtney Kardashian. Yeah. Why? Well, because she's got a new project coming on Hulu. Also, she's dating Travis Barker. Also, she loves attention. Yes. So the story today, the reason I bring it up today is that Courtney has responded to the thing that Holly referenced in the Dirt Alert update yesterday. So yesterday, <laughs> Scott Disick was talking about some PDA that... Travis Barker was exhibiting with Kourtney Kardashian right. while they were in Italy. Which is what they do anyway. It doesn't matter what country they were in. Yeah, right? Because that's all they do. And he says to Jonas, quote, uh, yo, this chick, and he's talking about Kourtney. Okay. Bro. Thank you. <laughs> bro. Lots of O's. Bro. Not one, two, three, four O's. Not five E's. Like okay. By e. okay. Um, bro, like, what is this in the middle of Italy? So he says this. He wrote that to Jonas alongside this paparazzi photo. And Jonas goes, um, I don't, like, don't get me out of your mouth. Like, I yeah. don't care about this. If whatever makes her happy, also, we're not, or I ain't your I'm bro. I'm not your bro. Right? So he said that. So court, okay, so that's the thing. And I'm right. like, I'm over here going like, Jonas, Scott Disick. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, is, he's just looking for attention. Yeah, don't feed the troll. Don't feed the troll. Don't right. take the bait. Just don't respond. Unless... You want to be part of the game, and you two are trying to be a part of the story. Which, if that's the case, congrats to you. You uh, have stranger a, things have happened. You have accomplished that goal. So then Courtney responds, and as a uh, a student of of religious text, Colleen, I would like you to enlighten us on this particular uh, oh, I, experience. You, you're gonna wish you didn't so say Courtney, that. So <laughs> Courtney, well, we do have a, another part of the story to get okay. to. So just know that. All right. Just know that. But I will set it up for you by saying that Courtney then responds to all of this nonsense by saying, <laughs> um, John 15, 7, mm-hmm. if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you wish and it will be done for you. I don't get what that has to do with okay, anything. Okay, so do you want my interpretation? Yes, or do you from want, a biblical like, do you want the actual? No, but do you want the actual text interpretation or do you want me to interpret what Courtney's interpreting? No, I want you to tell me what Courtney is posting. Yeah, because what Courtney is doing, and this is the thing I have like a full on rant about churches in session which is that the the bible is not your hallmark quote book that you get to use to try to throw shade at people that's actually not what the book is for there's a few people you might want to share that i with. know and to do that in the service of a dumb like this is not you are this no you no you are not inva- advancing any kind of cause right now that's not what the book is for but what i believe what i believe that courtney is trying to say with that is like don't worry about me y'all i'm all right with the the one upstairs like i've i've got my we're now bringing jesus into this like all these guys are just trying to get attention and now she's got to throw see that's what i'm saying is that that is that's what she's doing is like trying to use religious faith to throw shade and that just feels like a real I don't feel yeah I just that's, Jesus ain't very shady that's not well yes but the, she's just you're doing it wrong Chloe you're not helping the cause yeah so, I don't think she's doing what she thinks she's doing. Exactly. Yes, well, absolutely. and that's just, and, and, and that's actually an issue I have in general with, um, a, well, a lot of people, but celebrities in general and the, and the Kardashians, because Chloe has done it too, where she's like going to quote scripture to try to clap back at haters. And that's just not, yeah. yeah, that's not what it's for. I wouldn't, I mean, I don't, I don't know these scriptures, so I wouldn't do that in the first place, but I wouldn't generally probably, if I were the kind of person that would, drop quotes on people because I think it's about as useful as when people use you know Marilyn Monroe quotes right. that were wrongly attributed well, anyway to like make a comment on something they could just come out and say because that's what I'm trying to say too is like do you want the real interpretation of that actual scriptural occurrence because there's a bigger story to that and there's context or do you want me to tell you what I think Courtney's trying to do which is I think she like googled you know bible quote about being right with jesus oh, of course. you know and then she put it out there but she yeah. didn't do a full on no, study on of that of course not she did not do her exegesis don't don't use big words it just is like you know a biblical interpretation i know but we don't 
We don't do that we here. Don't do that. We don't do that here. Uh, anyway. Oh, sorry. There was more to get to. I know. I didn't I even get to get to the you. part I told you about. Guess it's what? We're fine. going to on the way on the no, other side of this. It doesn't matter. No. It's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we'll people are dying to know. No, they're not. Fine. It's we'll, fine. We'll, we'll just get to crazy, stupid day. idiots when we come That's back. That's the better story anyway. Fine. We'll do crazy, stupid idiots when we come as, back as on the Colleen and Bradley show. On the arc, yeah. It's oh, good. I go. lived. Okay. We'll be back after this on my talk 107.1. Oh, dumb people doing dumb things. We love to tell you about them on the Colleen and Bradley show, My Talk 1071. I'm Colleen Lindstrom. That's Bradley Trainer. Hi. Hi. We're live at the Minnesota State Fair, yes, and we are. it is time to tell you about your crazy, stupid idiots. idiots. Well, then, I guess one could say that's a crazy, stupid idiot. Yeah! Colleen and Bradley present CSI. It stands for crazy, stupid idiots. It sure does. Why? Well, because the world is full of crazy, stupid idiots. Dumb people doing dumb things repeatedly over and over again, oftentimes in the state of Say It With Me audience. Florida. Yes, and Florida. sometimes other places. Like, for example, where? Uh, Vancouver. Vancouver oh. Island in Canada. Okay. Um, I, I'm purposely slanting this away from you because I don't want you to know what's coming okay. in this story. All right. But this is this falls under the category of Oh, fine. Me, you see, you do you this. create your barricade right there. <laughs> um <laughs> so, this goes in the category cuz sometimes we have categories for our crazy stupid idiots yeah. of covid idiot. What does that mean, Bradley? Oh, you got LaCroix? Yeah. Sorry. I was just jealous I for brought a the LaCroix that you brought me. So That's true. I don't want that you one. You could have brought your own. That's true. Okay, sorry. What what is a COVID idiot? You would have drank that if I brought it for you. That's a hundred percent true. <laughs> what is a COVID idiot? Um, that's an idiot with COVID. No, a that's COVID a, related a COVID idiot. Related idiot. idiot. That would be kind of rude. Uh, yeah. If we were attacking, we people would never who had do COVID. that. No, but this. Okay, so this is what happened at a Vancouver, at Vancouver Island Dairy Queen. This guy shows up. He wants his peanut butter parfait. Um, but they, they're they like, you got to put on a mask. Like, that's our policy. And so the guy was like, I'm not putting on a mask. But he didn't just not put on a mask. He got mad about it. And then he showed that he was angry by doing something. Would you like to guess what he did? Uh, he burnt the place down. No. Okay. Mm-mm. No, not as bad as that, but pretty bad. Um, he lit. No. No. Uh, he doo dooed on. Oh, so close. The so ice close. cream machine. He peed so on him. He peed on the counter. What? <laughs> he. How are you? What? Yeah. That. I love it. I am. I'm. Was ever. He drunk? I will. I will always be fascinated by that being your first response to aggravation. Well, it kind of reminds me of. And I don't know. Is, Van, is Vancouver Island in the United States or is in Canada? It's in Canada. This one is. This because I feel like I there's know. like a is weird there... Vancouver Island situation in the U.S. I, I feel like you're right, but this is Canada. Okay, because the reason I ask is not to be geographically uh, problematic, but because the other story like this because it's also n- comes out of Canada oh, from okay. Tim Hortons. Horton oh, hears a true. poo. The woman grabs her doo doo and mm-hmm. throws it at the people behind the counter when mm-hmm. she doesn't get what she wants. Yeah. So I'm just so saying, you're saying a this, is a, problem. this is a Canadian issue. Crazy, stupid Canadians. <laughs> the, the, when they get angry, they potty. Yeah. Well, um, also, I would just like to, to congratulate the individual, although this is a crime, because I could not do that. To like, do that stuff on that demand. Like, not that I'm, you know, so like prim and proper or anything. I literally could not conjure that up urinate in that moment at people. Yeah, like it just my system wouldn't function. Yeah, it that would way. be like turn off unless it was an emergency and. But even then, I feel like your bladder would be yeah. shy. I would sooner be able to to pull a Tim Hortons than I would like number one. That's impressive. Well, because I feel like sometimes. <laughs> It's coming. This, the train has left the station and you can't, I mean, you just can't stop it. Right? So here's what happened. But like, number There's one. like 50% of the audience is like, yeah, totally. And the other 50% is like, I I'm can't a, believe we're sitting here for this conversation. Yeah. Welcome to Behind the you Scenes at the Colleen the and Bradley right show. Portion of You're the welcome. No, so here's what happened. The guy behind him in line got the whole thing on video. Oh, God. I know. That is the thing. Is like, I gotta make sure I get this on video. Listen. We all have bad moments in life, right? We all have moments we're not proud of. Um, but my hope 
for all of us is that when we have those moments that we're not proud of, there isn't somebody ready to get it all on video and release it yeah. at any moment. Yeah. Um, as but he released as it. As he released it. Um, we cannot share the video because there's lots of swearing in them. Um, the guy, he still hasn't been caught. So he literally just... He left his DNA there. Yeah. <laughs> somebody got it on video. He didn't even order. So that's the other thing. Joke's on you, buddy. You didn't even get your peanut butter parfait. And then he peaced out. <laughs> After I'm peeing. Stuck. I mean, you said it. I know, but I thought you were going to say something else that we can't say. <laughs> no. All right. Well, so anyway. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Peanuts out. There you go. Where are we going next? Okay. Uh, this time we are going to Florida. Oh, yay! yay. And I want to tell you about a grocery store kerfuffle. And I think this took place. I actually don't have the name. Oh, it was a Dollar General. Okay. Okay. So imagine you're at a Dollar General and um, you're in line and you witness uh, a lady take out a pocket knife threaten someone else in line with the knife menacingly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and threaten to gut them that would be terrifying Uh, right yeah like you're just in line at the dollar general with your i'm just trying to buy my like like, uh, you know your shoestring potatoes and air freshener yeah that you get a really good deal on Mm -hmm. and this woman is like i will gut you no thanks. What? That's and, creepy, right? Yeah. Like that's scary. Uh, well, the, the person who threatened to gut this individual was named Shanetta Wilson. So Miss mm-hmm. Wilson apparently threatened to gut a gentleman by the name of, uh, with the last name Walker, and it's why she threatened to gut him that earned this story crazy, stupid idiot status. She didn't like the wash of his jeans. No, but that's a good guess. It's totally off base. She farted. She did? Yes. She did? Yeah. And then she wanted to gut the Because other... he made a comment about mm. her passing gas mm. and how that was inappropriate. And she didn't like the sound of that. Okay. So she was perhaps a little offended by his, to- uh, okay. his toot commentary. I just feel like we have lost the ability to be in public with each other. <laughs> so according to the police report, there was a verbal dispute in reference to Ms. Wilson uh, farting loudly. And uh, apparently he made a comment, which, you know, if you pass gas loudly, you got to know that somebody, somebody is might say, say something. something, you know, and maybe, it's a possibility. maybe he just laughs or giggled or, you know, I mean, it's awkward, right? right? But it happens. It's also natural. Right. So you just go, oh, excuse me. And, and then move on with your life. Yeah, exactly. Instead, she took out a knife and threatened to gut him. Okay. Again, as I've said, I think we've lost the ability to be in public with each other. That, yeah. I feel like that is, that's he, extreme. He uh, did say he was afraid of being stabbed by her. Well, I would be too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, we're, you know what we're going to do? We're going to stay in Florida. Oh, fun. There is, there's like a multi-layered crazy stupid idiot with this. Okay. Um, the first one I'm going to name the parents who named their child Megan, but not spelled like Megan. Okay. Spelled like what? M-E-D-G-H-Y-N-E. Anyone? Medgane? Medgan. Medgan. It's pronounced Megan, but it's spelled M-E-D-G-H-Y-N-E. Is that, so like, is that like Welsh or something? I don't know. We're going to meet a 41-year-old. Medgan. Medgan. Uh, Kalange. She was. Oh, that, that sounds totally like Irish or Welsh or something. I know Where it probably Florida? is. I yeah, she's she's Irish Floridian. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's a thing. It's a thing. It is a thing. So she uh, used to be the head of HR for her company, and that company was called One Eight Hundred Accountant. Now I'm not. I don't I know if that's in the same line as One Eight Hundred Lawyers. Yeah, I mean, Lindsay Lohan. Used seems to. like what you do is you just dial that number and you'll get an accountant. Anyway, they hired her in 2019. They fired her six months later, which tells you she was not good at her job. Also, you only need a gown. That's true. The arrest is like extra. Because if you're still typing in the numbers after and a it's gown, ringing, it's going to be ringing. That's going to be annoying gonna when the person you. answers and you're hearing you're like, beep, wait, beep, wait. beep. 
Anyway, they fired her. I thought it was funny. I did, too. Thank you. You're welcome. They fired her six months after she got the darn job because they had a lot. She did a lot while she was there, and it wasn't good. Um, But this is where they're the crazy, stupid idiots, the company, because she still had access to the company's database. Uh Uh-oh. And over the next two days, she logged into the database and totally destroyed it. She deleted job applications and resumes. She left a bunch of profanity-filled messages in the system for oh her bosses. God. She got real revenge Now, it, again, everybody's dumb here because the company didn't take her credentials away immediately, and this woman who'd been the head of HR and had so many issues that they had to fire her still had access to it and then destroyed it. And, of course, they were like, who would have done that? Oh, Maybe it was the Medgin. person we fired. Yeah, Med- yeah. Medgin. it's Medgin. 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 Medgine? Yeah. Oh. Nope. Not that. <laughs> you didn't like that one? No. Nope. <laughs> the way that one tasted, did you? It <laughs> wasn't good. I mean, it, does that surprise you? It, <laughs> it cost the company $200,000. Whoa! They pressed charges. A grand jury found her guilty this week, and uh, she's going to be sentenced uh, in December. She's facing up to 15 years in prison. Did they give the company some free advice, though? Like, don't. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe next time. Re- yeah. Flip the switch. I hope they did. Flip the switch. I mean, I'm not trying to blame the victim because that's, you know, not acceptable. Right? Thank you, Bradley. Yeah. When we come back on the Colleen and Bradley show, it is that time of day. We are going to play a little game. What's that game called, Bradley? Throwback Live. After this on My Talk 1071.